I don't want to break up. I know people have hurt you, and you feel like I'd be better off without you, but I need you to know that my life is way better because I met you. You don't have to say that. I do. And I'll keep on saying it until you believe me. Hey, I'm Derek. And I'm Noah. And you're listening to the last episode of A Bite Of. Ever. No. Where we take our <laughs> current favorite cup, cup, culture, cup, chicken, and enjoy it one nibble at a time. You got it. I haven't messed that up in a while. Here we are, though, <laughs> on the last episode ever of a bite. Of. No, just of Heartstopper. <laughs> it's the last two episodes of Heartstopper, the last episode of us covering Heartstopper. <gasps> I miss it already. Yeah. We just finished watching it, and I miss it already. Yeah, it's one of those shows where it's like, I need to rewatch you at some point again. I'm excited. Maybe when the next season comes out, we'll do another rewatch. Do a rewatch. Yeah. 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 Oh, but yeah. until then... Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at a bite of pod. Also, we have a Patreon. Like the show? You can support us there. We got bonus Do you content. Wanna be a tradition. <laughs> yep. It's not gonna stick. <laughs> it's been two years. People say it. We you got don't want it to stick. Bonus content and other stuff and discounts on merch and that cool stuff. <laughs> you can also leave a review and some stars. Spotify. You can just leave some stars if you don't want to write stuff. Go we'll do that. It's all down in the description below. So, yeah, that's it. That's we thank you in advance. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's take a look back at Heartstopper episodes five and six, Friend and Girls. Happy 15th birthday, Charlie. The gang plus Nick all go bowling to celebrate. Tao pulls Charlie aside to tell him about Imogen and Nick overhears. Imogen. He, Imogen. He and Charlie have a conversation about their feelings by the claw machine. Charlie opens the perfect present and the pair share a kiss. Nick tells Imogen he doesn't like her and Elle's feelings for Tao begin to blossom. Wow. Tara is feeling the pushback to coming out while Nick feels comfortable to tell her he has feelings for Charlie. The pair and their partners go on a secret triple date for milkshakes before the school concert. After all is said and done, Tao is now the only one that doesn't know about Nick and Charlie. The girls decide they love their lives together and Nick looks proudly at his dream drummer boy and that's how it ends was that it that was both of them yeah <laughs> whoa how did we talk an hour <laughs> yeah it was the birthday party in the first that's one, right and yeah, then in the yeah. second one was all the milkshakes and running around people getting locked in rooms and smooching yeah now i remember spoiler alert going forward the final Two episodes of heart Stopper, season one we will be talking about them and the rest of the season if you're just tuning in Go back and watch all of them and then come listen to us. Every single one. Yeah. And then also, just to be warned, they do deal with some heavy topics like bullying and coming out and sexuality and everything like that. So, trigger warning. Definitely. So, let us officially take a bite of Heartstopper, episode seven and eight, Bully and Boyfriend. I don't like this episode. Yeah, these two episodes, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's. The worst episode emotionally leading into the happiest episode emotionally. I don't like when shows do this. I know they have to do this. And every book and every medium does this where they get our characters low and low to bring them up and up. So then we're happy. It's like, yes. we're just happy. Couldn't we just stay that way the right? entire time? No, no, no. No. When, when the title card breaks like a piece of glass, <sighs> you know it's going to be bad. And it's black and white. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's no butterflies or leaves or anything so we start this is this is no bueno from the start mm. charlie is going to hang out with nick's friends which is yay cool because like nick has other friends aside from harry and ben and the people that we don't like before that charlie does talk with tori a little bit the, uh, these two episodes mirror each other this one and the last one mm -hmm. tori is very much being the big sister in these two episodes, which I really like to see, especially because Alice Oseman kind of wrote Tori's story, but they still found a way to make Tori important mm -hmm. in the show. So I thought that was really cool. So playing the big sister, she does make fun of him for crushing on Nick a little bit, but he does tell her that they are going out, which 
I think she appreciates that he opens up just a little bit, but she does do the big sister thing and warn him. Careful of those other people. Don't, you know, they might be mean. Be careful of his friends. Yeah. And, you know, Charlie is so excited about going out with Nick and they're sort of doing something publicly together. It's it's one of those things of like Nick hasn't yet realized who he's friends with and what that means for his relationship with Charlie. And so Tori is there to be like, Charlie, you need to prepare yourself that some of these kids were the kids that were making fun of you last year. Right. You know, and so she's kind of connecting that for him. But he's so love struck by the entire situation. He can't necessarily see it. We also get that scene where like when Charlie thinks in his head. The flashback. Yeah. So the whole thing of being boyfriends with Charlie is obviously tainted a little bit because of the Ben incident. Mm. And we see this like flashback slash more serious than it probably was, but that's how he feels. So it is valid of Ben just freaking out that Charlie assuming that they're boyfriends. Yeah. Because they kiss. Yeah. So like I, I, it's clear that Charlie has some attachment issues and not really wanting to go forward and just letting the other person lead without their feelings really being at the forefront. Well, the one time that he one and only time he put himself out there, his feelings were dashed and he was made to feel less than and made to feel foolish for saying that. So he's going to be apprehensive going into any relationship now. And I think that, um, we we see a lot of Ben in these two episodes, and Ben is really there to show the difference between Ben and Nick and Charlie's relationship with the two of them. Shit and love. Yeah. There's a big difference. <laughs> yeah, and like using someone for very specific reasons and wanting to be with someone because you love and care for them. Yeah, I mean, using someone. That's the key word there. Using. Mm-hmm. How dare. Bencident. We don't like the Bencident. X. Well, let's go to the movies. It should be better, right? Right? <laughs> no. Most of this episode takes place at this movie theater, and Charlie is reasonably nervous to go hang out with Nick's friends, even though Ben and Harry aren't there. Oh, surprise. Ben and Harry are there, and Nick didn't know that they were going to come. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Gross. Yeah, so in the books... Nick does have these three friends that are not Harry or Ben. They're these three other guys that they're on the rugby team with, and they Mm. have names, and they have stories, and they're actually very nice. And throughout the Heartstopper, like, first two books, which this season covers, uh, they're kind of, like, talking amongst themselves, being like, when is Nick going to tell us he likes Charlie? Like, they're cool with it from the beginning. Right. So, in, in my head, those are the three people he thinks they're going to the movies with, but then the other two jerks have tagged along in some way. I hope so. Why are they laughing and egging Harry on? How dare. <laughs> Stupid I, jerks. I don't, I don't like these situations that they put Nick and Harry and everybody else in because of these people, but I do like it in that it shows it does happen mm-hmm. and that it's bullshit. Yeah. So, like what? Like mob mentality sort of? No, that bullying does happen for oh, people yeah. that are just being themselves. Yeah. Well, this is, you know, in watching this episode, there's it, it's just like this like thoughtless almost habit and need to go after Charlie and Tao eventually constantly. And there's no rhyme or reason to it. No, it's there just, never is. And when I think about my own bullying experiences, it would be like I would be having a perfectly fine day and out of nowhere, I'd be doing nothing. I'd be nowhere near this person. Right. They'd find a way to go out of their way to make me feel horrible. Yeah. And it's so real. But Nick even says that to him. Mm-hmm. Like you just find a reason to make people miserable for no reason. Right. There's, I mean, there probably has some, their own stuff going on, but at the end of the day, it does not matter. Yeah. Because you're being an asshole. Right. It's just so bizarre how, well, it, it, it's the reality of life of how different people are and how like some people, when they handle a situation, they just internally go inside themselves and just kind of stay there where others lash out and need to bring others down around them. Oh, yeah. Nick apologizes to Char. He <laughs> calls him Char. Oh, Not a fan of that nickname as far as Charlie goes, but. I mean, they can have their own pet names. <laughs> I don't know what Charlie... What is the nickname for Charlie? Charlie is a nickname. Right? It's like it's Charles, Charles. Yeah. Right? Or Charles Char- Worth. Chi-Man. C-Seaster. C- C- Ew. <laughs> Seaster. Seaster? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but he, he apologizes uh, for ha- Harry and Ben being there. He didn't know they were going to be there. Right. I love this scene. 
there is some bright spots, obviously, in this episode. In the theater, when they're all sitting down and watching an obviously scary movie. Lots of screaming. Yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> they do touch each other, like, in the dark, and they kind of, like, enter, like, pinkies and stuff. It's very nice. It's very that exciting and very nerve-wracking thing when you're dating somebody, but also, like, in the dark movie theater, thinking that, for some reason, everybody can see you, which is not the case, especially your hands. But you just feel like there's a spotlight on you and you're like, yeah. is this okay? Is this okay? Most people are watching the movie. Right. Most people. Yeah. <laughs> most people are. Except for Ben. Uh... Well, when I remember being 16, 17, when I had my first boyfriend, we would hold hands underneath the armrest. Wow. Oh. Because this was back in the day when there weren't fun, loungy chairs to lay back in. So they had like they didn't have like giant separations between the chairs. It was like regular like a chairs. table in yeah, between. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my god! Imagine trying to like sneak holding hands or stuff with you a couldn't. table and food. You couldn't, <laughs> and then accidentally hitting the button, yeah. sending you forward or backwards. It'd be too obvious. No, <laughs> I don't like that. But I do like that. You know, there's a jump scare. Charlie like accidentally holds his hand. They have a moment. Nick reaches over with the pinky and then finally just gives into it and does the full handhold. Yeah, it's sweet. And we got those doodle sparks and stuff. Yeah. I love the doodles in this show. Doodle sparks. After the movie, Harry asks Charlie how it's like being gay. And then he doesn't seem gay. Does he like this guy, that guy, Harry Styles, this other guy in their friend, friend group? It's a lot of LGBTQ people have heard the same exact thing. Even if it's from somebody that's quote unquote, not a bully, mm -hmm. but they think that they're being funny or like, I don't know why that their sexuality or who they like has to be a topic of conversation. Yeah, it's like that thing when people say like, well, I can tell you because you're, <laughs> you know, right. It's like, what? like I'm what? Why? Right. And would you S say that to someone else? Stereotyping. No, probably not. Yeah. No. It's like, oh, because I'm a man who likes men, you can say this to me because you know, but if you were talking to a woman who likes men, you probably wouldn't put No. That, you wouldn't preface it with that. No. Absolutely not. It's stupid. And yeah. it is a form of bullying, and it's a form of stereotyping, and it's homophobic. It's just plain and simple, it's homophobic. True. Plain and simple. <laughs> Charlie decides to leave because why not? Nick does apologize. But Charlie says this thing, and he does say it in the next episode, too. And he said it kind of a few times in the series where he says he's used to it by now, mm -hmm. which is awful and mm -hmm. disgusting. And poor Charlie. <laughs> yeah, he has that and then profusely apologizing for things that he doesn't need to apologize for. He's yeah. just constantly beating himself up for just being himself and feeling that he needs to tell other people sorry because, because of what? Nothing. Because right. of nothing. Because of nothing. And that's the sad thing about this. Does it get better? No. Ben decides to corner Charlie in yeah. the parking lot in yeah. the dark. Where? Okay. Wait. Hold on. Wait. This is... It doesn't matter. But I just want to say, where the fuck did Ben come from? Like, did he just, like, leave in the middle of the movie and nobody noticed? It was like he followed <laughs> Nick out to the parking lot when Nick went to catch Charlie, slid behind a car. Went so down no four levels yes, and then came and back then up. came back up. <laughs> He's a sneaky sneak. Yeah. He's not good people. <laughs> But he confronts him about being with Nick. He saw him holding his hand during the movie and all of that. And Charlie denies it to protect Nick, which is sad. Mm. And Ben tries to like do this, I don't know, just this shaming, degrading, bullshit type of bullying where he's like, as if anyone would ever want to go out with you, anyone as desperate as you. And it's like, dude, stop projecting onto Charlie. Ugh. It made me so mad. I've heard that type of thing before, not necessarily directed at me, but it's just like, oh, so you just wandered into the relationship unwillingly mm. and this, you know what I mean? It's like, Char you're yeah, Charlie becomes everyone's scapegoat, right. basically. Pay Ugh. attention to him. Look at him. Don't look at me. I never liked him. you all that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't understand, though. Like, I guess it's 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 a jealousy thing, right? He's jealous that 100%. Nick and Charlie are together. So to make also himself, jealous of Charlie because right, he has a shit out. figured out. Yeah. Right. So in order to make himself feel better, he needs to beat Charlie down. Yeah. What a guy. It's typical bullying, but it's stupid. You know, it's what like I think about like as a gay person when You're gay? you at some surprise. I'm married too. Surprise to you. Oh. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> surprise. But like as a gay person, how do you reconcile from 
bullying another gay person for being gay. You know what I mean? It, like, it, it's horrible. Oh, it's horrible. It's denial. They have their own stuff to figure out. And that's just one where a maturity thing comes in. But two, more people being open about talking about that type of thing, because if they felt like they could actually talk mm. to people about it, they wouldn't have to be dealing with themselves with this in their underdeveloped mind. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess it's like a form of internal homophobia. Oh, yeah, 100%. Know? I mean, I'm sure we've all been through it especially queer people, where if you're put in that type of environment, you're like, I wish I wasn't this way. Why am I this way? Right. You're not necessarily hating yourself, but you are kind of hating yourself. And oh, it's yeah. unwarranted, but... Yeah, but also there's a piece of it that comes from societal norms being shoved at you and you being told that you're wrong over and over and over again. So the only thing you can do to help yourself is to put others down or to fear those who are freely themselves. Yeah. I mean, this is all coming from personal experience. If any of you are like, psychiatrists or like behavioral yeah. anything let us know if we're on the nose and if not let us know <laughs> yeah comment below are we horrifically wrong and being pseudo psychologists right now yes <laughs> but we're gonna continue anyway yeah. <laughs> so this next part i liked a lot and also didn't like nick versus harry it was a long time it was like six episodes brewing almost he confronts harry nick confronts harry because Charlie left. He was clearly uncomfortable. He was being homophobic to him. And he tells him, you find you always want the perfect opportunity to make someone feel miserable. And then what does Charlie do? He goes a step further and uses the F word. Mm -mm. The gay slang that's used as a derogatory term. Slur, I'm, not yeah. slang. Oh, slur. No, that's what I meant. In my head, I said it out loud. I didn't say it. <laughs> it's a slang slur term. <laughs> but I'm not going to say it because... I don't want to give it power. We can say it, but that's us taking that back, just like queer and everything like that. Mm. But if somebody uses it in a derogatory term, no, 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 no. No, thank you. I have been called that word too many times. It has been scrawled on too many of my notebooks. Yeah. I don't like it. Burn them. <laughs> not the people, the, the notebooks. I wasn't mm. calling for a you know, mass. <laughs> not to get too, like, sad about this it's like you can burn those notebooks but it'll always be burned in your memory oh i could still see it to this day i'm sorry mm -hmm. no it's the real i mean that's again this is why this show is so important anyway i'll leave it at that you mm -hmm. could listen to the other three episodes uh as to why it's important <laughs> <laughs> nick fights harry <laughs> Just move on. Well, I didn't. I didn't know. To, I didn't know if you wanted to get someone to you. psychoanalyze me, please. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> so Nick fights Harry. Clearly, uh, this is brewing. Obviously, Nick feels very personal about this, and all, he's just being a dick. And Harry deserves to, you know, get a little ass whooping, just a little bit in the car. No, when, a lot of it. A lot of it. But well, I mean, he's a child, so it's like mm. his peers can. But you know what I mean? Like beat the shit out. Of yeah. <laughs> Adult. <laughs> but Nick in the car with his mom, she asks what happens. And this scene I thought was actually really sweet the second mm. time I saw it around. She asks him, Charlie is a really special friend, isn't he? She knows. I know she knows. And just that silent moment, the way he looks at her and then her look after that, it's like they should just talk to each other, mm. but they don't. It's so heartbreaking and also sweet at the same time because it's like they want to but they just don't yeah and i think <sighs> that she doesn't want to pressure him it's that thing of when he's ready he'll tell me uh, i also like this scene because he says i'm just so angry at myself for not seeing all my friends really suck and this is that turning point finally for nick to see that he's been surrounded by just complete assholes what was your first hint yeah, Nick. <laughs> I guess when you you know it's like when you're living in it, you don't realize it maybe, right? Right. And then once you're kind of taken out of that and someone from the outside shows you something, you're like, "Oh, wow, all these people are trash heaps." Yeah. Cool. I mean, sometimes it does take a little bit of like somebody being like, "Hey, um are you sure they're your friends? Mm. They're kind of dicks. <laughs> they're the worst." So after the next day at school, Harry continues to poke at Charlie, obviously, and he realizes that Nick fought harry did i say those names right i feel like i did Nick fought harry yeah yeah i feel like i said that whole sentence right you got it you watched it you're listening to us talk about it <laughs> <laughs> charlie asked nick what nick what happens oh my god you were see, there you did it <sighs> i said nick's don't second guess yourself 
Charlie asks Nick what happened when he sees his black eye. And again, Charlie does the thing of, I'm used to people saying those things about me. And I can see that Nick is just not frustrated, but just like, Charlie, are you not going to understand that you don't, that's not a thing that should happen? Like, right. you shouldn't be used to that. Right. And I'm glad that he kind of was not aggressive, but he was very stern with how he said it to him. It was a sweet and also like kind of should have been an eye opening moment for Charlie. Mm. I was just like, dude, it's not okay. No. It's never okay. And he says to him, you shouldn't have to put up with anything like that. And then he puts his head on his shoulder. Yeah, sweet boy. It's so cute. Yeah. In class. Yeah. In form. Hello. Homeroom. They, listen, in two episodes ago, they kissed by the claw machine. Okay, they went to the park. Now they're putting Baby heads steps. on shoulders. Baby gay We're steps. We're getting there. Baby gay steps. But they just like each other too much that they can't help it. It's hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Charlie goes back to hiding in the art room like he did when he was bullied, which is devastating because he's regressing a little bit. Yeah. He was finally more open and proud. And then the more open he is, the more he regresses back. He's getting bullied. The person he likes is getting shunned in some way or is is losing their friends. So he can't handle it. The only thing he knows how to do is go back to protect himself. Yeah. Guess what? We find out from Elle. When they're when she's talking to Tao, that also Harry bullied her. Mm-hmm. Get him the fuck out of the school. Whip him with a paddle. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they do. Do they do in England like corporal punishment? Probably. I did. Definitely. I was. I went to schools like that. Really? Yeah. I was gonna get paddled, and I looked her straight in the face, and I said, "You hit me with that. I'm gonna hit you back." And she didn't. What kind of school me. is this? Private schools. I went to private school, Texas. Eagle, Texas. I mean, my mom went to private school too, and she got beat. Yeah, so. but that was like way before us. Like that was a thing when our parents were kids. Like, I'm sure it still happens in some. This schools. was like the 90s. Yeah, it happened. I don't have to tell I'm, you. I'm, I'm saying it's bad. Yeah, I, I'm just as flabbergasted as you when it was and about of to happen. Your mom found the school where they hit people with paddles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she I was can't. like. She was interviewing for it. She's like, do you smack these kids with paddles? Yeah, okay. They're, do you beat the children? I'll triple the tuition <laughs> exactly. just so they go. I'll give you more money. No, I mean, them. my mom's great. She did carry around a wooden spoon with, it literally said, my name on it. And she would say, what does it say? And it, I would say, my name on it. And she said, that's right. <laughs> so that's the type of- these, these stories are getting <laughs> darker and darker. You brought it up. <laughs> um, I didn't but that's fine (laughs) right well (laughs) wow we're just unloading a lot of childhood i think that was we just needed that we needed 14 seasons for us to finally for you guys to really get to know us (laughs) that's what this is about like wow that's why they're so damaged (laughs) got it got it okay makes a lot of sense now marvel superheroes (laughs) yeah we just want to be superheroes please (laughs) in this conversation though tao does say something that i think is important He, he says that someone should have said something when mm. Elle was getting bullied. It's 100% true. I know it might seem scary. I don't know who I'm talking to at this moment, but I'm just kind of just saying it into the universe. If you see somebody getting bullied, if you don't feel comfortable intervening with it, find the appropriate party that mm. should know about that in the workplace and school environment and whatever, and tell somebody. More likely than not, it usually helps. No, it does. And again, from my own experience, Derek, you're at your quota. (laughs) It's funny, though, right? Because I was bullied by that one person in particular, and I never... Was his name Harry? No. Uh And I never said anything. No one ever said anything. And it just kept happening. And it's like this weird thing of like, why won't... It's like you're afraid something bad will happen if you tell someone about the bad stuff that's happening to you. But when I finally like broke down and told my mom and my mom confronted his mom, it stopped. Yeah. With like one month left of school. There's all that hidden power and they can get away with it. There's no consequences with it. But as soon as it's out in the open and other people aside from their like friend group or whoever's around them when they bully knows about it and can like tell them wrong, it usually stops. Yeah. Like I I remember early on, I would tell my my parents and my dad and my brother would be like, you got to fight him. And I'm not a fighter. And my mom would say, do you want me to say something? And I would always say no. Yeah. But like, why? Because it's imba- you don't want to get bullied more. I mean, it's, there's a whole, I mean, the situations are all different. I mean, 
That's for you to answer, really. I mean, well, yeah, I don't know. It's it's more of a rhetorical why. I'm not expecting an answer. I'm just like wondering, and it just seems to happen a lot. Yeah, that pattern. I'm a okay, goat. Yeah, rhetorical. Good because I have no answer. Yeah, I wasn't really asking you. <laughs> well, you answer. said it, and I was like, uh, uh, you were like, situations like, are different. Yes. Whatever. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> uh, I'll be back. <laughs> They're like, is she Hulk season coming? Soon? Yeah. <laughs> oh, slip getting. Uh... Speaking of slips, L <laughs> slips and tells Tao that Nick and Charlie are going out and that he's the last one to find out. <laughs> Oops. Yikes. Uh oh. Feeling bad. L later goes to Tao's house to confront him. And the only reason why I'm bringing this up, sometimes we skip over scenes and everything because they're like, whatever. I bring this up because I looked at Derek and I didn't notice this the first time that we watched it. But Tao's mom is talking to L when Tao comes downstairs because mm-hmm. she loves L. And when they're about to go upstairs, Tao's mom is like, keep the door open. And it's like, <gasps> it's like she knows about L. She knows that she transitioned and everything. And she knows that they like possibly like each other and the fact that this mom is just like i see that i love Mm -hmm. that keep the door open oh i love tao's mom tao's mom's amazing tao's mom like the parents in this like the few little glimpses of the parents that we get they're kind of rock stars yeah in this series except for charlie's mom i don't know how to feel about her charlie's mom is an interesting character but his dad is is lovely fantastic yeah he had a moment in this episode too where he was like if anything happens call me yeah so protect yeah, for, for the most part the families are are pretty wonderful maybe not in the upcoming season but no spoilers <laughs> no spoilers here just read the books guys yeah. <laughs> we will not spoil the rest of the series for you i promise derek right what listen <laughs> just because i know what happens doesn't mean i'm gonna say it or maybe not maybe. Uh-huh. don't do another l <laughs> don't make it slip. okay fair <laughs> it Tao and L do talk a little bit. And one thing of note that Tao says and something that we've been talking about with him is that he doesn't know why he's afraid to be alone. Yeah. And that's one of the things that he struggles with. He can see this person going this way, this person going this way, Isaac being the adorable angel baby that he is. But then Tao's just by himself. Yeah. So keep that in mind for Mm. later. Mm. At lunch. So lunch is a big part in this part of the episode. Charlie made plans to talk to Nick at lunch. Tao asked Charlie to meet him for lunch, but can't because he's going to talk to Nick. So then he skips out on meeting with Tao to talk to Nick, which is bad because Tao wants to talk to him about Nick. So it's like a messy. Yeah. And it's not good. Tao messages Charlie, don't bother. We're barely friends anymore. <gasps> The drama level. Sad. And of course, that throws Charlie in a tizzy because he's like, oh, I was just about to talk to Nick about this thing. And now Tao's mad at me. Great. But then guess who shows up? Harry. 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 I don't like Harry. Get away. Like, did you you have nothing better to do? He He really doesn't. Tao's by himself, minding his own business, upset about his friend. And then Harry picks on him. Yeah, he says something, I think, right before he gets into the fight with Nick earlier in the episode. He's like, whatever about Charlie. And he's like, and he's got a friend that's obsessed with me. And it's like, Harry, you're actually obsessed with them. Oh, my God. Every you time. Seem to, you Blech. can't leave them alone for some reason. No, because that's his personality. He's literally built his entire weird ass thought process personality around bullying these specific people. Vile scumbag. I don't like him tao takes all his rage out on harry which i'm sorry but like i liked to see it pushes him to the ground throws a drink in his face and they fight meanwhile charlie's about to like break up with nick things get messy they don't really break up they have to go so nick there's a fight yeah nick has to break up the fight (gasps) oh this one's fighting that one that one's fighting this one tao blames charlie for everything this is all your fault which Just is leave me alone. awful because that's how Charlie feels. So to have his best friend tell him that it is actually all his fault is not good. It, I can't. It's, it's not good. I can't. And that's how this episode ends. Fighting. They're fighting. Who's fighting? They're fighting. They're going to break up. No one's friends. It's horrible. I mean, he should have saw that Nick at least like helped him a little bit and like broke up the fight. Too much rage. Did you ever see a really big fight in school or get into one like that? No, I've never been in a fight. I did, however. So the same. Oh my gosh, the parallels, the parallels 
So there w- I was friends with a guy <laughs> named Arthur who was also being bullied by the Harry, bully, by my Harry. Oh. Right. One day, Arthur lost it. He just pushed him too Man. far. He wrestled him to the ground. He like put his nails in his neck and he like ripped his neck up. <sighs> it was the coolest thing I ever saw. Oh my God. It was awesome because. He finally, like, it was like he just kept pushing and pushing and pushing, and finally Arthur broke. Yeah. It was the best thing ever. Wow. I, I wish I would have done that, but I never, I, I could never. I mean, like, hutzpah. look, I don't condone violence. Obviously, Derek doesn't either. Like, unwarranted violence. But, like, I mean, I'm sorry, but, like, if you hit me, I will probably hit you back. We were, like, 12 or 13. But you know what I mean? It's just, like. It's what do you expect to happen? Like, there's going to be everybody has a breaking point. So, Arthur met his and yeah. Tao met his. Right. I mean, you get surprised. These bullies get surprised whenever they fight back, but it's like, okay, it's well. It's like, what, yeah, what is, you know, there's cause and effect. What effect are they hoping to get? I don't know. Somebody just taking it and that's it. Right. Yeah. I don't know. The only time, I mean, I was in a, few like fights but like not really fights what does that mean fights i mean mostly verbal quite a few physical <laughs> the one one i particularly remember i was in fights but not fights but well, like they were fights i don't like it was more of like i was like i wasn't the direct cause of it but it was like with my friend group you know what i mean it was like i kind of was in the fight but mm. i wasn't it wasn't about me and it mm. wasn't for me but there was only one that was like actually me, and I kind of started it, but it was like that same bullying thing. Mm-hmm. When I came out in high school, I had stopped dating this girl that I was dating from like middle school to then or whatever, and we became friends. We're still friends to this day. She has beautiful kids. She's amazing. She's doing great. We're great. But at the time, her, her brother had like failed like four times Ooh. high school, and he was like uh, like 20. Ugh. Over 20. Yeah, it was whatever. He was a loser. I'm sorry. He was. A 20 year old came to fight you? Well, he was in the school mm-hmm. and we had these rotundas. And when I came out, everybody knew about it, whatever. And he came, he would kind of like say stuff. It doesn't really bother me. I'm just like, whatever. You're just, you shouldn't even be here. You don't go here anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like, go away. We were walking up the rotunda and behind me, he just kept saying stuff. And I was just like, oh my God. Like, I just wasn't having that day. And then he called me the F word. And that's when I was just like, you know what? That's not okay. And I'm just done with you. So I may have pushed him and he might have like went downstairs a little bit. Ooh. But then he kept talking and I was like, okay, that wasn't enough. So then we fought in the middle of the rotunda. And it's very much like a, I would say like a coming of age, like this is the fight scene that's going to like put him in detention that then he'll meet like the people that will better, you know, all that kind what of stuff. What happened? I, I got in trouble and I got suspended for three days. He didn't get in trouble? He did. Same thing. But oh. then he was allowed back. But that was it. But that was the only time I was ever in a really fight. Is there any blood? Um, I did not have any marks on me, and they had a black eye and a fractured nose. So, oh. uh, take that. Wow, sirs, <laughs> that is a real fight. I went off. I don't, you know, I didn't think they expected me to go off, but I did. <laughs> he went off. Sis. I went off. I was in marching band and track and football. Yeah, he was carrying heavy instruments. Yeah. <laughs> If I had my bassoon with me, it'd be all over. Okay, you don't want a bassoon to the face. (laughs) Should we hear a word from our sponsors? Okay. Did you see a far too scary movie? Are you pushing people away even though they love you? If you're feeling down, why not get up and become a Patreon member like Susanna, who soothed our souls with their support. <laughs> to find out how to become a super supporter like Susanna, go to abideofpod.com. All right. Episode right. eight. Boyfriends. It's the finale. Boyfriends. It's the finale. Charlie and Tao aren't talking. Mm. Charlie and Nick aren't doing great. My wife. Everything's a mess. It's terrible. But Darcy and Tara are doing great. We and love Isaac them. is a baby angel. 
They weren't in the last episode. No, they it's weren't. Very sad. Yeah, but they're in this one. We so need it's their fine. ray of sunshine yeah. for sure. <laughs> this one again, like I said, it parallels the last episode. Tori and Charlie kind of have a conversation. He said, "It's a parallel. It's a parallel in this episode and the last episode." You said parallel like five times. Too. It's a parallel. Oh my god, Tori. <laughs> It's a great big sister with Charlie. And this is even sweeter than the last time that they had it. He finally tells her about the Bencident and Harry and the fights. He feels like he ruins everybody's life. It doesn't help that Tao just told him everything's your fault. And it would be better if he didn't exist. I don't like that. I never want to. Very scary. It's very scary. I don't like hearing that, even in fictional characters. I don't think we can stress this enough, but that's... Not the answer. Mm. You're beautiful. You deserve to be in the world. And fuck anybody else that says otherwise mm-hmm. or makes you feel otherwise. Because you have your sister. I'm talking about Charlie at this point. <laughs> you have your sister that loves you. You have Nick that loves you. You have your friends that love you. And you have two people that are tiny little itty bitty tiny people that won't matter in a few years from now. Listen to Lizzo's song Special on oh, her album Special. You're special. Because that song really encapsulates a lot of what Noah just said, and it's such a beautiful song. Agreed. Listen to that song if you ever feel down. And then you know what? Listen to that whole album. Yeah. (laughs) Because it's fire. Yeah, it's really great. (laughs) The world is a beautiful place because you're in it. And that goes for all you listeners. Mm. Just saying it. True. Okay. She she Wait, but then she hugs him and she says, you're not ruining my life. And she says, I'm going to make you pizza. Yeah. (laughs) He's not hungry, though. He doesn't want pizza. Yeah. What is she drinking? I can't figure out. It's, sometimes it looks like water, and I can't tell if it's because she has a black hoodie usually that the drink looks black. They tend to like apple juice in this series. Maybe it's apple juice. Yeah, maybe. maybe if you read, if we read Solitaire, we'll find out what I have she's it. drinking. I have it right next to me. I'm going to read it, guys. Mm-hmm. Once I found out that Tori was like the start of Heartstopper, but also like there's a whole book on Tori, I'm like, I, I need this book. We need to know the story <laughs> yeah. of Tori. So at school, Tao isn't talking to Charlie. Charlie can't be with his friends for sports day because he's on the rugby team. Charlie is also blowing off Nick. Charlie tells the rugby coach that he wants to quit the team. Nick talks to Tao. (laughs) That's where we're at now. I just wanted to lay the groundwork that sports day is happening. Yes. And I also want to say that Isaac was reading Gender Explorers, Our Stories of Growing Up Trans and Changing the World by Juno Roche. Get it, Isaac. Mm Mm-hmm. We didn't have an Isaac book last one because he wasn't in it. <gasps> There's I, two in this one. I had been waiting for Tao and Nick to finally actually have a conversation aside from the one at the bowling alley. And this one I think is good for both of them mm-hmm. because they both say how they feel a little bit, but then both of them give each other the actual perspective of what it is. Yeah. And Nick kind of tells Tao how Charlie's feeling because he's with Charlie and he can see how much he appreciates Tao. Even though Tao doesn't feel appreciated. He's scared. Yeah. They're, they both know Charlie in a different way. Right. And in their specific situations with Charlie, they're making incorrect assumptions. And the other one knows the gap in their information to tell them, well, actually, this is really what Charlie's going through. And this yeah. is, it's actually not what you're thinking. And so I like that these two very important figures in Charlie's life come together and are able to help each other in their situations. And be like, in a way, get over yourself. That's not really what's happening. Yeah, I like that Nick tells, or Tao tells Nick. Oh my God, that's a hard one to say. I don't think I've said that before. Tao tells Nick (laughs) that he needs more than a secret guy that he kisses on the down low. Mm -hmm. Which I think Nick kind of assumed, but didn't actually really know. Because nobody said anything. Yeah. Even though Charlie says it's cool. It's not cool. It's not okay. He doesn't like yeah, it. Nick was always aware of that. And, right. And that was very much, again, a big difference between Nick and Ben. Nick is very much aware of what he's putting Charlie through and it doesn't make him feel right. He wants to almost be where Charlie is so that he doesn't have to put him through that. Yeah. The show does a really good job of talking about complicated relationships and how they intersect and on different levels. And I like it and how it's perceived by other people as well. Well, that's the thing. It's almost like that thing of like, there's two sides to every story, but in reality, there might be three. It's or like what, four. what you're thinking, what you're thinking, but what actually is really going on. And who's to say what actually is really going on? I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> Mystery. <laughs> Only the narrator knows. So the Truman Higgs Sports Day is upon us. 
Sports day. Did you ever have a sports day or like an all students day or a spirit day? Oh, you want to hear about more traumatizing stories? From Never my mind. Past? I'm going to exactly. actually, I'm just going to give you mine then. <laughs> Go. Why would this be traumatizing? We had freshman field day. Does that count? I pulled a towel and didn't sign up for anything. Oh, well. Because I was too afraid that people were going to make fun of me from past traumas. And um, they signed me up for the relay and we finished the relay and some upper freshman came up to me and he goes, yeah, that's how you run. <laughs> Sorry. So, <laughs> and it was Noah. Noah was the I bully. I didn't know. I didn't mean to laugh. I laughed because it's like, what does that even mean? He was like, yeah, heel toe, heel toe. That's how uh, you run. Oh. Was I ever on track? Did I look like I was on track? Is your job to sit by the field and make fun of freshmen? You could have been in track. How did he know? It was literally <laughs> the first day. The first day. <laughs> yeah, that's awful. I don't agree with that. We had these things called spirit days, which were a lot of fun because they had a bunch of events kind of like this and like each kind of subject and like, you know, how the department heads and stuff, they would kind of come up with their own events. Ooh. My favorite ones were the trivia where... If you got it right, you got to throw a pie at the teacher's face. Oh, my. And it was a teacher of your choosing. <gasps> Ooh, Mr. Anderson, you got a pie to the face four times. Got him. Yeah, got him. So um, that was a lot of fun. I that liked sounds that. like fun. Yeah, we didn't have that. We just had freshman field day and then never did anything fun again. Okay. Well, Welcome um, to Catholic so school. <laughs> Higgs and... I thought it was going to be a light, fun question. There is my past is riddled with traumas. Don't okay. you understand this? Okay. <laughs> Higgs and Trueham. 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 That's what I call it. Emogen? Yes. Trueham. Come together and pair off into teams and compete in various events and activities. Charlie goes and talks to the art teacher, which I did like that we got a final scene with the art teacher. So this is a very like cliche end of season moment where they're bringing all these people back you at least see them in co some capacity but the art teacher tells him i thought hiding from it all was better but the loneliness was just as bad don't make anyone make you disappear <gasps> uh, so good this art teacher's so wise yeah he's wonderful and if they follow suit with the books it is not the last we will be seeing of him i hope they go to paris the second season should take place entirely in paris it should. And it should. they should go with them <laughs> as a chaperone. Yes, he and one other teacher go with them. The rugby teacher. No. Oh, okay. But I've never said this. The casting of the rugby coach. You have said it. I have. Yeah. It's spot on and perfect. <laughs> yeah, I think you said it two episodes ago. Oh, it's so. It's just like literally, it's like they lifted the character out of the book and put them on the screen. What if Alice wrote the character after this person? Could have been. <laughs> So you know how you said you didn't sign up for anything like Tao? Well, Tao didn't sign up for anything. Yeah. And Charlie, after getting the pep talk from the art teacher, he goes out and he's like, switch with me because you're about to do the 200 meter and you're not good at that. So I'll do it. <laughs> you don't like running. And this is his way to like repair his relationship. So, of course, what event is the Bencident at? Oh, the same one that Charlie's going to be at. But you know what? Charlie's really fast and he beats Ben. Yeah. I love it. I'd love to see it. Because he's fast and you're not, and suck it. <laughs> and he says, you don't get to have an opinion about anything I do, so leave me alone. He's still in his last breath of the season. <laughs> Tells him, he chose to blackmail him still, and he's like, oh, so you're going to tell people about me and Nick. What about you and I? Oh, wait, I'm not going to do that because I'm not a piece of shit. Go suck an egg, Ben. <laughs> suck an egg? Hey, that's a weird expression. What does that mean? You know what it means. I don't. <laughs> yeah, you do. Well, go, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just to give you a layout of like the characters and what events are doing, Isaac is doing the javelin because why not? Because strong. And also very precise and patient. I Got should it. have done javelin. Dang it. Oh, Isaac is reading There Is No <laughs> Planet B, a handbook for the make or break years by Mike Burns. Berners Lee. Excuse me. Berners Lee. Berners Lee. I like that he's reading an environmental book while being out at sports day in the field. That's nice. <laughs> On brand. Tara does the high jump and Tao and Elle explore old classrooms. This is where we see all where our characters are at in their current 
state before the end of the series. Oh. In the art room, this is very important, guys. Listen to this. In the art listen, room. Listen. Listen. Because you're, you're probably not doing anything else. Just listen. <laughs> listen. In the art room, because it's a very important place in this series and for our young people in this series, Elle tells Tao how she feels. <gasps> Psych. No, no, she doesn't. Trick. So close. Doodle butterflies. Long looks. Almost a kiss. And it doesn't happen. But. Yes. But. Hello. Tao felt it. Mm-hmm. <gasps> We've only been getting it from Elle's perspective. And now we know that Tao's like, wait a minute. Yes. We get a final look at Tao watching Elle leave the room. And he gets his own butterfly. And they follow Elle out. <laughs> it's so sweet. I like it. Season two. Now. I need season two. Why aren't they in Paris yet? (laughs) Nick plays the rugby match. Charlie watches. Mm. Nick runs off of the field, takes Charlie by the hand, and leads him into the school while everybody saw what he did. Uh (gasps) Uh-huh. Imogen saw it, and she smiled. I'm like, oh, you are really an ally. She really is an ally. It was a really sweet moment. Yeah. I liked it a lot. But this is even sweeter. Nick tells Charlie how he really feels. Tells him how it's all worth it to be with him. Charlie needed to hear this. He, this is what Charlie needed to hear. He needed to know that he's not crazy for thinking these things. That all the stuff that the bullies were saying isn't true. What he went with with Bencident isn't correct. He needed to be wanted, seen, and loved, and needed, and all of those things. And they kiss, and love wins, and it's so great, and I love it. <gasps> it's so sweet. So... This scene is such a turning point for Nick because he's literally in front of not only his entire school, but he's in front of both of the schools on the field. Oh, good point. And he turns around and there is the person that that's the only person he cares about. And he realizes that, yes, actually, that is the only person I care about. That's the only person to opinion I care about. So I'm going to be with that person. It doesn't matter what any of these other people think. It's really just Charlie. You can also tell his head wasn't in the game, even though he scored a goal, a touchdown. I don't know what it's called in rugby, but it's not that. A touchdown? It's not a touchdown. Uh... Guys, comment below. What is it called? <laughs> I like how we keep asking them, even though we could Google it. I know. But, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I, I want to hear from you guys. Yeah, that's true. Someone has to know rugby better than we do. Yeah, make us feel Dumb for not knowing what rugby Dumb is. Americans. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, and, and in that, I think he weighs everything. And in his mind, he's like, that's actually what I want. And that's what matters. And so, you know, this moment in the hallway is him finally just professing his feelings to him and letting him know that he is so worth any of this that he's gone through because none of this actually matters. Charlie is the thing that matters. It doesn't. And I'm glad that there are characters are saying that. And I also like that. You know, we don't have this like, no, it's not true, blah, blah, blah. Charlie says, I believe you. I believe all these things that you're saying. I believe that I'm worth it. I believe that you like me. And and, and they kiss. And it's just so, so sweet. Yay. Our protagonists are in love. Everything's great. Their hearts have stopped. (gasps) My hearts have stopped. -er. Hopped or stopped. Yeah. But it only gets sweeter. Because Nick says to Charlie, let's go to the beach, beach, <laughs> Nicky Minjaj. Vine, who's a Vine, or who watched, who did Vine? Does no one else watch back to back to back to back 30 minute Vine compilations like we do? Probably we're the only people keeping Vine in business by watching them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we were talking to two of our colleagues last week and I said, let's go to the beach, beach. And they were like, what is that? Yeah, there was a <gasps> few where we're like, that's 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 weird. How do you not know? Like, look at all these chickens. Come on. That is too good. <sighs> anyway, they go to the beach. They finally have their date. Just them. Yes. Just them together. OK, so I one of my favorite parts of book to screen adaptations is when the author pops up in some random scene. Oh, my God. And so we have adorable Nick and Charlie sitting on the train. And it's really cute because Nick's a rising charlie and charlie says i've never been in this direction which is so sweet it's so cute <laughs> but then who's sitting across the aisle from them drawing on her tablet <laughs> i was gonna say ipad but i don't know what it is tablet to be safe or paper 
Alice Oseman is yep. sitting there, the creator, the writer, the executive producer, the everything. Did um you like when Stephanie Meyer showed up in uh, Twilight? What did she do? Did she order coffee or something? Yeah, she like ordered that? coffee. Yeah, that, that was okay. <laughs> I like I think when... she was also in the audience for the wedding, too. Ew. Which is weird. Creep from the yeah. cafe came to the wedding. Because it's like, if she was invited to the wedding, she had to have known somebody. But like, why did nobody say hi to her when she was at the diner? She's just that weird lady that's always <laughs> around town. Listen, give me G. Willow Wilson in Ms. Marvel. Okay. Give and me... Sana. She was and in Sana, it too. You're yeah. right. Give me Jenny Han and to all the boys I love before. Like, this is what I'm oh, looking yeah. for. That's the magic, baby. Also... Stephen, Stephen King was also like starred in one of the movies too. So He was in It. Right? The yeah. second part of the yep. newest It. He played like guy at random antique store. Of course he did. <laughs> and of course, Stan Lee in every Marvel property. Until his passing. Until his passing. Yep. Ah, so good. I do love those. That's really nice. Yeah. And she's just sitting there. She doesn't say anything. Oh, just creating more amazing love stories as she does. <laughs> there's so many that she's created. <laughs> And there's more to come. More to come? Yeah. So in this this scene, this final scene with Nick and Charlie, they're at the beach. It's super cute. Photo booth. Photo booth as well. Nick tells Charlie that he's definitely bisexual and that he wants to tell people that matter. So he's telling Charlie that, look, I'm promising you that things are going to be different and I'm going to do this for myself and also for us. Like, I'm not going to be like, everybody, hi, I like boys too. But he's going to tell the people that matter, which... Is what matters. Right. And it's also this thing of like, if people find out, they find out. But I'm not going to make like a TikTok coming out, you know, story or whatever. Which if you do, that's fine. But you don't have to. No, you don't. And you if, don't have to come out at all if you don't want to. No, you really don't. You, you don't. We're, we're past that. I am saying the universe is past that. You don't have to. Love who you love. Heck yeah. Yeah. But this scene, not only... Do they have this moment on the blanket? But there's also screaming into the ocean. Oh yeah, I I like Charlie in a romantic. No, no, in Charlie a, Spring. Yeah, you say it. You know it. I like Charlie Spring in a romantic way, not just a friend way. It's so cute. Aww. It's so cute. And Charlie <laughs> tells him, "I've never thought this would happen to me." <laughs> Heart has fully stopped. But wait, we're about to talk about. My, one of my favorite scenes in television history. Wow. I'm not even kidding. I'm it, dead serious. As far as drama goes and like stuff like that, there's categories in my head. But this mm. is one of my favorite scenes in television history because it's so important. The conversation that Nick has with his mom. <gasps> uh, also, the bloopers for it. Phenomenal. Yeah. She I, forgets her line. And she <laughs> says to him, I forgot what I was supposed to say. I was just looking into your sweet little yeah. face. Oh, no, it's so cute. <laughs> oh, so he comes out to his mom and it's just so sweet. He just tells her like, hey, I Charlie and I are dating. We're boyfriends, but I also like girls. So. That's me. Yeah. And, and what she does is what every queer person would love for their parents to do. Mm -hmm. She just loves him. Yeah. I, I and thanks like, him. Yeah. That's the thing. Her response is the perfect response. And I even think this is for anyone coming out to anyone. Oh, yeah. You say, thank you for telling me. Yeah. And then move it on. it takes a lot. Yeah. It takes a lot to do that. Mm -hmm. And so that's the perfect response. I also did want to point out, she says something like, when he's first like talking about Charlie, she says, like, if, if this is about us, our Mallorca yeah. holiday, he can't come. I already booked the tickets. Yeah. That is, again, that happens in the heart. Stopper books. They're going to Mallorca and Charlie can't come. She already bought the ticket. Oh no, yeah. poor Charlie. <laughs> but I like, he's like, no, it's, 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 it's not that. Something um, else. But it's so sweet. I'm glad that we left this story in a good place where everybody is great. Everybody is falling in love, is in love, is telling people about their love. <gasps> oh. yeah. And then it ends with this just beautiful scene of them laying back on the beach. Nick and Charlie are wrapped in each other's arms and the cartoon waves come crashing in to surround them in love. It's so beautiful. It's so sweet. Heart has officially stopped. It won't start until I'm season dead. two. Yeah. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sweet. Yeah, and I don't know if I don't think it said that when we first watched it, but now there's a screen that says Heartstopper will continue. In the season, yeah. Or in another season or, or whatever. Yeah, I don't think it did either, but I'm glad they added it, because that's fun. Yay. Officially. Oh, two more seasons. 
Maybe, maybe more. Maybe more. I think with the content they have, it's definitely two seasons. But if it's still going currently, yeah, it is. Be like it's going still. Yeah. So then we could probably maybe hope for a last one, a third one, or for- fourth one. That's how fifth numbers one, work. Eighth one. <laughs> no, well, that's too full much. on adults. No, I don't want that. <laughs> no, because you know that they're gonna like make it get married and then divorce. And no, no I know. I'm well, not. Yeah. I don't want it. That's one of those things that creators always say. It's like when a series ends, they've kind of found a way to make you know, usually like in a sitcom or a dramedy to make their characters be happy. Mm-hmm. It's like if we do a reboot of some sort or we reopen the chapter, that means the drama. things have to go bad again. They don't, though. They really don't. They don't. They don't. They don't have to go bad. <laughs> Sing it. Keep going. No, that's it. I'm just going to yeah. say they don't have to go bad. Anyway, <gasps> that's it. Did you like this? Did you like the series? Did you like this? <laughs> Are you talking to me? No, them. Oh, the listeners. <laughs> them. <laughs> Who are we talking to? You know, sometimes when I'm talking and like I see your face, sometimes I feel like I'm just talking to you and sometimes I forget I'm talking to other people. Yeah. It's, which is nice, but it's also like, oh, wait, you guys are listening. Yeah, it is an interesting thing, right? It's a conversation between two people that other people are listening to. Stop eavesdropping on us, you Actually, weirds. we want you to eavesdrop yeah, more, please. I'm just kidding. I love you. <laughs> All right. Should we do our final special segment? Yeah, last special segment of this season. All right, here is To Be Read and Loved, Heartstopper Edition. I would like to introduce you all to I Think Our Son is Gay <laughs> by Okuda. Okay. All right, so if you feel drawn to the relationship Nick and his mother have in Heartstopper, yes. you will enjoy this slice of life manga. Ooh. While her husband is off at work, Tomoko takes care of her two boys. She cooks, cleans, and worries about them. Her eldest, Hiroki, is in his first year of high school and seems to be dropping hints that he might be gay. He does things like excitedly writing messages to fellow male classmates, absentmindedly leaving books with muscly men on the covers on his desk, and opening up to his mom about what type of guy he's attracted to by accident, of course. Oh, geez. Yes. (laughs) The sh- they're what watching, a slip <laughs> they're watching like a baseball game he's like oh yeah that guy's really good looking his butt's so firm wow look at him run those <laughs> glutes uh, <laughs> the short vignettes in this manga are all shown from mama's point of view Aww. her internal monologue is talking to her spouse about how she thinks their son might be gay the stories are cute uplifting and most importantly illustrate a parent who loves their child no matter who they love <gasps> uh. Added bonus, little brother Yuri has very strong Tori vibes. Oh, I love a good Tori. Yeah. Guys, I'm telling you, Tori, I love I love that kind of character. Yeah, he's so love cool. It. He's the little brother. He knows exactly what's going on at all times. He's like Tori and Isaac mixed together. So to the point. Yeah. Just there. Ugh, it's love this, it. This manga is very, very, very sweet. I want to read it. There's... You never told me about this. Surprise, I just did. Surprise, now I have to <laughs> buy another book. <laughs> Or just go to the library. (laughs) I actually read the first volume on Libby. Oh, we need to get Libby to sponsor us. Come on, Libby. Yeah. (laughs) Get it together. All right. Well, um, you know how we just like finished a season and then we started this one? Well, we're starting another season like right after this. So I hope you guys like listening to this much and you don't miss the breaks in between more. They're like, we could use a month break. Thank you. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so um <laughs> we'll see you in the courtroom next week objection <laughs> thanks for listening to a bite of artwork and editing by our own noah be sure to subscribe and follow us on instagram at a bite of pod and on facebook at a bite of if you have questions recommendations or just want to say hi you can email us at a bite of pod at gmail.com you can find us on all podcast platforms Please be sure to rate and review to spread the word. Hope you join us next time on A Bite Of. Bye.